Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at another Star Wars vehicle, and this is from this uh, Mission Fleet series, uh, and what we're looking at today is the Razor Crest from the Mandalorian. And uh, this uh, Mission Fleet scale is not something that I normally collect, uh, but in terms of having a version of the Razor Crest in my collection, uh, the options were kind of limited. Uh, basically, they, there was this version, which was around $41, something like that. And then there is the HasLab version, which is more difficult to acquire and also costs hundreds of dollars. Uh, so, which honestly, I cannot justify, even though the detail and everything on it looks amazing. Uh, I just, uh, the cost of that is way more than I've ever paid for a Star Wars vehicle, even even something as big as the the at, -AT. Uh, which was, I think that was around $100. I might even got that on sale uh, for less than that. But um, yeah, I've, I've never paid, you know, uh, multiple hundreds of dollars for a Star Wars vehicle. So, so to me, it doesn't really make sense. I know for some super collectors uh, who want to ha have something uh, very sophisticated in their collection, uh, maybe that purchase is justified, but not for me. Uh, I'm going to pass on that and just settle for this. Uh, so uh, even though the scale is not um, in keeping with the three and three quarter inch stuff that I have, it is rather large because uh, I was looking at the uh, photos on the box. Uh, you can see uh, this thing is, uh, you know, 13 inches long, so which is pretty sizable. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, some of the stuff that comes with this, you can see it comes with a bunch of weapons here. And these uh, actually look uh, roughly three and three quarter inch is in size. So it's possible some of these weapons might actually work with my existing action figures. Uh, the proportions on the Mando figure that comes with this are, you know, a little weird, kind of kiddish. And, and Grogu is actually too oversized for three and three quarter. He's actually a little too large. Uh, but, you know, uh, I didn't really buy it for the figures. I bought it for the vehicle. And uh, I've seen previous reviews of this, uh, and uh, to me it looks, uh, you know, interesting enough, and um, so I decided it was worth uh, picking up. Uh, I can show you, uh, on the box they show uh, some of the other stuff that's available in this line. Um, you can see over here they have a Mandalorian fighter, they have a Moff Gideon's TIE fighter, and this looks like Obi-Wan Kenobi's uh, Jedi Starfighter. So, yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff available in this line. Uh, I've seen some of these in the store. Um, to me, they didn't really interest me very much. This is the only ship uh, from this series that I'm probably going to pick up. But we'll see. Uh, it's possible down the line um, they may come up with some other stuff uh, in this scale that I'm interested in getting. So in terms of the box, I really like the artwork on it. I, I think it looks pretty spectacular, this, this scene. And uh, so, you know, in terms of presentation... You know, they, I think they did a good job with it. But I'm interested to get this thing out of the box and take a look at some of the features. So stay tuned. So getting this thing out of the box and assembling it was really not very difficult at all. Uh, they did provide an instruction sheet uh, in terms of uh, how to assemble the various parts. But there really wasn't much to it. Uh, basically, the two side guns in the front uh, needed to be attached and also uh, the top of the roof that includes the engines uh, needed to be attached to the top. Uh, and then the, um, the other gun basically can be put in any location, in various locations around the ship. So uh, pretty straightforward, um, not too much difficulty. So here we have the Razor Crest out of the package now. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, there is an instruction sheet, so in case you get confused on anything, uh, in terms of the assembly and stuff. And also, uh, this instruction sheet also shows uh, the various doors that open and also how it can accommodate the uh, the Mission Fleet speeder bike in the back. So that's very cool. Shows uh, where the weapons go and uh, how the figures uh, fit inside the uh, canopy. So, so very cool to have that. Uh, I didn't really need to use it much in terms of, uh, you know, putting this thing together. Uh, but and it looks great. Um, honestly, uh, I love all the detail on this. Uh, I think they did a really good job. Uh, I would have preferred that the missiles be black, uh, but I understand why they didn't do that. Uh, basically, because uh, for uh, the sake of you know parents trying to find missiles that have been launched, it is uh, wise to put them in a bright color, uh, basically because they will stand out against the background. Uh, losing uh, firing missiles is very common uh, among these kinds of toys. So I understand why they want to do them in a bright color. So uh, like all the detail on this, um, I think it looks uh, pretty great. And uh, 
again, this, uh, this little missile launcher here uh, basically can fit in several different locations on the ship. Uh, there's a center location, there's also one in the rear, and there's two on either side of the engines as well. So uh, I'm going to put it all the way in the rear for now uh, because I want to show you uh, inside the canopy, uh, which will not flip up when it's uh, in this position facing forward. So, so you want to make sure uh, to take that out of the way if you're going to open up the canopy. And as you can see inside there, a lot of detail, um, and there are two seats basically to accommodate uh, the two figures. And uh, uh, should be noted that you'll need to take uh, the cape off of uh, Mando in order to put him in there. He comes with a cape on, so uh, you'll need to remove that if you want to uh, seat him inside of the craft. Also, there's a hole on the back of this uh, to accommodate the uh, jetpack, which is also included. So that's very nice. Uh, uh, so uh, one interesting aspect of this is that I wanted to see if this jetpack would be compatible with any of my other Star Wars action figures, and it does not appear to be because um, this uh, little attachment point seems a little too large um, to go on any of the other action figures that I have. Um, the ones that I have from the Power of the Force line and those from the prequels uh, all seem to have a smaller attachment point. So now it's possible you could be able to drill out a larger hole uh, on the back of one of those figures in order to accommodate this backpack, but uh, then it wouldn't fit the other backpacks that, that came with that figure. So uh, the figure itself is is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, looks like the uh, arms are uh, articulated in several places because they will bend back and forth like this and also do 360. Uh, the head seems to be on a ball joint, so you know that'll bend back and forth and side to side and swivel. And then it just looks like a single point of articulation at the hips and then nothing at the waist. So uh, not too much articulation. Um, the hands also uh, have a pivot point here. So uh, that gives you some ability to uh, hold weapons and stuff in various configurations. So not bad overall for a figure this size. But again, the sort of distorted proportions on this uh, don't really appeal to me too much. Uh, I prefer uh, three and three quarter inch action figures uh, as opposed to these. They seem a little cartoony. Um, so, but he will hold the various weapons that come with this, and it comes with a very uh, good arsenal of weapons. Uh, so, that's kind of nice. So that's like just a standard Imperial blaster, you can see. But he comes with a whole bunch of uh, different weapons. So, uh, and I noticed uh, basically these are sized in such a way that they will fit in the hands of. Uh, uh, three and three quarter inch action figures. I can show you an example of that. So here we have my three and three quarter inch uh, version of uh, Din Djarin. And as you can see, uh, you can fit those weapons in his hand. So so that's very nice. So uh, in terms of the accessories that come with this, yeah, all of these will be usable uh, with my other action figures. So that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, even though the backpack isn't, um, you know, this isn't compatible basically with my other action figures, um, which kind of stinks, but uh, I'm not sure why they did that too, because it would have been so easy just to do an attachment point that was similar to ones that they had, had done in the past. So I'm not really too sure. It seems like a little bit of a missed opportunity there uh, where these could have been interchangeable with three and three quarter inch action figures, but it's not. And then on the Grogu figure, uh, basically you get a little bit of articulation at the head, uh, but then the rest of the body is just one solid piece, so not too much to write home about there. He does come with this little basket though, uh, which fits ni nicely inside the cockpit, and I'll show you that in a minute. So uh, yeah, so if you wanna put these in the cockpit, basically you just position the basket in the rear seat, uh, and that sort of wedges itself in there kind of nicely, and then, and then you can just put Grogu in there. And then uh, with Mando, you just have to manipulate the legs forward and also uh, sort of pinch his arms in a little bit to uh, to get him in the cockpit. So yeah, and he fits in there just fine. So, and then in position, basically you can close the canopy and yeah, they're both their heads clear. And uh, so they fit in there just fine. So yeah, that looks really cool. And uh, I wanted to do uh, some testing to see uh, if this was compatible with any of my other action figures. In terms of uh, uh, my regular version of uh, Din Djarin, uh, yeah, he's too big to fit in there um, at the moment. Uh, I'm, I'm almost tempted to do some uh, some customizing on the ship eventually to see if there's a way to uh, change this around a little bit in terms of being able to fit this guy in here because 
obviously his his shoulders will clear the opening. Um, so, you know, and this thing is held together with screws. I did notice that. So you can see in each of these holes, there's a screw. So, <laughs> so I'm very tempted to take this thing apart at some point and see, see if I can fiddle with it and maybe make it in such a way that it can accommodate three and three quarter inch action figures. That said, uh, there are some three and three quarter inch action figures that will fit in here. So I can show you an example of that. So here we have a uh, Yaddle from episode one. And uh, as you can see, uh, this figure is small enough where it can actually fit inside uh, the cockpit. So there you can see uh, her sitting in the back seat. And then also we have uh, Anakin Skywalker from Episode 1. And as you can see, if you bend his legs, uh, he can fit in the front seat of this. And uh, and the, the canopy will close. So um, so yeah, uh, in terms of being able to fit some 3 and 3 quarter inch action figures in here, if they're small enough, yes, they will fit in the cockpit. So um, that's kind of cool. So it's not completely uh, exclusive to just Mission Fleet uh, characters. You can actually fit some other uh, kinds of Star Wars figures inside of this. So that's kind of cool. Uh, again, I, I think there is probably a way to uh, maybe customize this so that I can fit uh, other kinds of figures in there. So uh, we, we may disassemble this thing at some point and uh, give that a try. But let's continue on with a review of this. Uh, there are several doors on this that open. Uh, so you can see uh, this one uh, is a little difficult to open. I noticed uh, this one's a little easier. Uh, and if you stick your fingers inside of this, uh, it makes it easier to open up that ramp. So um, so yeah, these, these two doors open. And also there's a door on the back that also opens. So the entire thing really opens up quite a bit. And because the, uh, the top piece is also removable, um, you can actually take the entire roof off. Uh, so this gives you a lot of chance to sort of interact with it. And as you can see, uh, there's stickers on the inside that depict uh, some detail and stuff uh, of um, the interior of this vehicle. So they actually did a pretty good job in terms of uh, sort of rendering this out. In the past, uh, Star Wars vehicles, like during the 1990s, the late 1990s with the power of the Force line, often they wouldn't have as much detail on the inside. I know if you look at like the interior of Boba Fett's uh, Slave One, uh, there's nothing on the inside there in terms of detail like this. So, so that's kind of cool that they're actually going going the extra mile in terms of actually uh, doing something interesting on the interior. So that's quite nice. Uh, here you can see the weapons rack. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and put the various weapons in there and I'll show you how those fit. So stay tuned for that. So uh, now I have all the weapons in the weapons rack and you see each each weapon has its own dedicated spot. So uh, there's really no confusion about where uh, which one goes because you can clearly see the outline of each uh, weapon and they all fit in there uh, perfectly. So so that's really cool. And uh, again, um, because these are compatible with uh, three and three quarter inch action figures, that's a nice little arsenal of weapons um, to use with um, my Mandalorian figures. So so that's kind of nice. Uh, I wasn't really uh, expecting whether or not um, these things would actually work, but they do. So that's uh, excellent. So, and then all the stuff uh, closes back up and uh, and then you get your ship again. Um, and the top, all you gotta do is uh, sort of click that back into position and it's all complete. So, uh, very cool stuff. And again, these, uh, these missiles do fire. All you gotta do is hit the button and those fire off. So that's cool. And uh, once again, uh, this, this firing one, uh, basically you can fit in several different positions. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have this on the ship most of the time because I I don't think this is one of the features is actually included on on the Razor Crest at all. So um, so yeah, I'm not too sure if I'm going to display it that way or not. Um, basically, uh, I may end up doing a lot of modifications to this uh, ship at some point because, uh, as I mentioned, I am curious as to see uh, whether or not um, this could be adapted for use uh, with three and three quarter inch action figures. One other thing that should be noted is that uh, these things inside of here do spin, uh, so inside of the engines, so that's uh, another cool articulation point, so they, they spin around. Um, so pretty interesting stuff. I, I love all the detail on this. Um, I think they did an excellent job. So a couple other things I want to note about this uh, ship. Uh, in terms of accessories that you might have in your collection that might seem appropriate to go inside of this, 
Uh, I was able to fit uh, the Han Solo carbonite block inside of there, but just barely. Uh, it's very tight squeeze. Uh, had to load it in through through the back door and kind of fiddle with it until it finally would fit in there. So. So yeah, you can fit a carbonite block in there. Um, I know uh, in the show, The Mandalorian, obviously he transports around uh, some of his bounties in carbonite blocks. So yeah, one of them will fit in there, but again, it's very tight squeeze. Uh, also, uh, if you have the uh, Hot Wheels version of uh, Grogu, um, which comes, comes with a hover pram, yes, that will fit in the back. Uh, it just barely fits though. It's sort of a, it doesn't quite fit all the way down in there. But it will fit, and then you can close the canopy. Uh, so that accessory uh, will also work with this if you want to have that in your collection and fit that into the Razor Crest. And I can show you a size comparison between uh, this vehicle and a three and three quarter inch action figure vehicle. I have a Boba Fett's uh, Slave One here from the Power of the Force action figure line, and as you can see, although it's a little bit larger, it's not a lot larger. Um, so to me, this seems like a little bit of a missed opportunity where they could have made this uh, completely compatible with three and three quarter inch action figures. If they just tweaked it a little bit, made it just a tiny bit better, uh, a little bit bigger, uh, they could have, you know, made it accommodate, um, the regular three and three quarter inch action figures like this. Cause this one is obviously designed for three and three quarter inch action figures. So I'm a little confused as to why they went this route. I mean, you could you could say it's cost savings, but with all the extra stuff that was included with this vehicle, you know, the extra missile launcher, which wasn't really necessary, um, the two figures, um, you know, all the weapons and all that kind of stuff. Although I like it, I, I think um, had they just eliminated the figures, eliminated the extra uh, gun, um, and maybe, uh, you know, pared back how much they were including with this set, could they have just done a straight up, three and three quarter inch vehicle and just sold the action figure separately. Um, Cause that's the way it was done uh, during the power of the force era. Uh, basically this ship, uh, I believe the only accessory that came with it was the, um, the carbonite block, the Han Solo carbonite block, and it didn't come with any action figures. So uh, that's how they marketed uh, ships uh, back during the 1990s uh, when the power of the force action figure line was going so I'm wondering why um, why they've decided to go a different route uh, in terms of stuff. Because I hear excuses all the time from, you know, people who say, oh, well, it's too expensive to produce vehicles for three and three quarter inch action figures. Is it, though? Um, because like this one, this particular vehicle is not that far off in size from a three and three quarter inch action figure vehicle. It just, uh, you know, had they, you know, changed a few things, tweaked a few things, Basically, this could have been a three and three quarter inch action figure vehicle. Um, so, but instead, the only other option is to spend hundreds of dollars and buy the the Haslab Razor Crest, which I'm not going to do. Um, I'm satisfied with this version. And again, um, stay tuned to the channel because I may end up doing a a full on customization of this vehicle to make it adapted for the three and three quarter inch action figures. I haven't really decided yet. But again, I showed you uh, that um, this thing is held together with screws, so which uh, you know makes it very tempting to sort of start taking this thing apart and and see what can be done with it. So we'll see. Uh, but for now, uh, I really enjoy it. Really uh, like having a version of the Razor Crest, and it does display well uh, uh, next to you know three and three quarter inch action figure vehicles. So um, so for now, I I'm pretty happy. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more reviews of Star Wars vehicles in the future, think about subscribing to the channel because I will be covering more of this kind of stuff in future videos. Until next time, I hope you're having a great day and may the Force be with you. Thanks for watching.